There we go. Finally. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to be talking about landing on the desktop with Electron. First of all, I would like to say thank you to the organizers of Leeds.js. And thank you, attendees, because without you, I'd be talking to an empty room. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, like I said, my name is Nathaniel Akenwa. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at ChatterboxCoder. And if you can find me later, you will find out why I'm called at ChatterboxCoder. Um, and I am a developer evangelist at Twilio. Just a quick show of hands, how many people have heard about Twilio before? Okay, oh, that's good, we're doing something right. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, we're a cloud communications company that give developers tools to enable them to integrate telecommunications into their apps. Now, I've only been working at Twilio for about six months, and one of the first things I got asked to work on when I joined was this. It's a game that they built called Twilio Quest. And they were like, oh, this is a game that's going to teach people how to use Twilio. And I was like, yeah, this is awesome, great, sign me up. And then he said, so this is what it's going to be. And then I saw these three logos, well, four, that down here, and I freaked out. Uh, and what are these logos? So they are the Windows logo, the Mac logo, uh, the iOS logo, and the Linux logo. And the reason why I got really scared was because I am a JavaScript developer, and these are desktop applications, right? And uh, they, there's, desktop applications are quite big. Uh, they usually have um, architecture that is very different across the different OSs, and there's a very high barrier to entry, in my opinion, learning how to build for those very quickly, especially someone who was just getting started. Um, and then I found out, oh, not before I do that, I am really comfortable with web, web technology. And I think web technology is very accessible to people. Uh, there's a low barrier to entry. And it's really be good because they've got a large reach across so many different computers and different platforms. And usually it's standardized. So yes, I know that there are a lot of things that Internet Explorer doesn't, doesn't support, but usually um, you can do things that go across all of these different platforms and different architectures. Um, and it evolves quicker than operating systems because uh, usually browsers can roll out changes quite quickly. So this is where I'm comfortable. And so talking about Electron, Electron is a framework that allows us to use web technologies to build desktop applications. So using the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that I know and love and being able to build actual desktop applications with it. Um, but what is Electron? So in order to do that, let's go back in time to my favorite year, for a very special reason, you can guess my age now, to 1994. Now let me just paint the scene of 1994. So the original Lion King was top in the box office um, back then. Uh, a company called Sony had just released one of the greatest consoles of all time. You can tell I'm young now because I've said that. Um, one of the greatest consoles of all time. And a company started up in a garage called Amazon. You can see where they are today. But another very important thing happened in 1994, as most of you JavaScript developers should appreciate, Netscape. And Netscape was uh, released in 1994. And this is important because Netscape created the language that we all know and love, or hate, some of us, uh, JavaScript. And it was the world's first uh, popular browser. Uh, it, was, uh, it wasn't the world's first popular browser, but it was the world's first browser that had JavaScript in it. And it was the most popular browser and had 90% of the market share of the internet. Fast forward to today, and the most popular browser is Chromium. Now, I know some people would say it's Chrome, not Chromium, but Chromium runs underneath the, end, underneath the hood of Chromium, and also a lot of other browsers use Chromium as well. So, we've got Chromium, but another um, very important JavaScript innovation was Node.js. And Node.js was released in 2009, and allowed us JavaScript developers to be free from the browser, and we could write code on computers and on the command line and run JavaScript. And that opened the door for full <coughs> stack JavaScript developers. So now we can build servers um, using Node.js. And what happened was Atom, how many of you have heard of the text editor Atom? Okay, how many of you still use the text editor Atom? <laughs> Everyone's hands up. Oh, okay, we got one. Um, but GitHub, um, GitHub, uh, when they were developing Atom, they found a way to combine Node.js and Chromium into a single runtime. So you had Node.js running on the computer, but then Chromium um, doing the rendering, handling the rendering. And it was like a beautiful wedding. 
and they had the baby, and that is Electron. So Electron was developed for Atom, and now it's used so widely um, in the world. We use it, how many of you have Slack on your computers? So Slack is an Electron app, VS Code, VS Code is an Electron app. I could go under a couple of others, but those are <coughs> two of the most popular ones. Um, so I'm gonna start by talking about Hello World. Uh, because that's always the first thing we try to produce as developers. And the way Electron works is there are three main files. So we have a main.js file. And the main.js file does the heavy lifting. So it handles windows, um, opening and closing windows, not windows, the operating system. Um, and it also um, has most of the native features. Uh, so you can call the native um, um, GUI APIs on each of the different platforms, so on Mac, on Windows, and on Linux. And then you can also access all of the Node APIs, so what you may not usually always have available in the browser, you can now do with Electron. Um, and then, so, sort of, main.js helps you manage the sort of the app from a very broad perspective. And then what's happening inside each of those windows is really coming out of an index.html. And this is in its most basic form. Now, some people may be using frameworks like React or Angular, and you can definitely integrate those into an Electron app. I'm just boiling, boiling it down back to its basics. So the index.html is where all the rendering um, is taken from, or the how to lay out and what actually happens inside of that window. And then you also have renderer, uh, renderer.js file. So a renderer um, JavaScript file is almost attached to that index file. And you also have access to the node APIs that you may not usually have in the browser. Now, what's a bit tricky is the renderer.js file doesn't actually have access to some of the native um, GUI APIs. So for example, if you wanted to make notifications or certain things that are built into the operating system, they're not available in renderer.js and there's a process at which you need to um, connect this and main.js and have them pass information to each other to trigger things like that. But I'm going to <coughs> say show you a demo. I'm just going to look into the most basic piece of uh, code that is a Hello <coughs> World application. So I'm going to mirror these displays and hopefully this works. I'm gonna move over to here. So this is very simple um, HTML and you can see we've just got a Hello World with a title and welcome to your Electron application. And if I scroll over one more, we can see that this is the Hello World. It's not just, I can actually minimize it, it's like a normal window. And then what we can do, if I scroll back to this, we can see that this is our, let me move that. Can, can people see that? I think it might be a bit too small. But what we have is we can create our windows, so we're creating a browser, and then what we're doing is we're loading our index.html. Now what we can do is rather than just loading a static HTML file, we can create um, a HTML file dynamically and serve it there with Electron. And what we do is we have events that happen when certain things um, occur. So for example, if the window is closed, we wanna get rid of it. Um, if, we, um, if they all close, we should quit. Um, and then this is something which is quite useful um, on Mac specifically, where on Macs, let me get rid of that. One max, if you close it, you can click on the icon and rather than the whole application quitting like on Windows, if you hit X, the whole application quits. Uh, and on Mac, if you hit X, just the windows close and then you wanna hit quit. So that's just a little piece of code to help with that. So you've got the index.js and the index.html. Now, if I wanted to do some more extra things inside, for example, <coughs> notifications, and I wanted to trigger them from my HTML, then I'd have the renderer.js file that would be running alongside that. Hopefully that's clear. All right, so now let's head. Now, when you're building with Electron, you can then also, and this is the bit small, it's on the resolution is very different, <coughs> but what you can do, so this is an example of some of the Electron APIs that are available. And when I say Electron APIs, it's really just the native <coughs> GUI APIs and some and the node APIs that you have available. So for example, we can create and manage windows. I really wish I could zoom in. Um, so you can create and manage windows. So for example, this is a little demo and all of this is available on electronjs.org um, and that's where I sort of went to learn about how to build things with Electron. So 
if I want to view a demo, this is a new window. If I, I can move it around. And it's being managed now by the main.js of that file. And uh, so there's other things. For example, the menus that appear on the top, file, edit, view, window, and help, you can customize those as well um, with the code in Electron. Uh, you can also register keyboard shortcuts. Uh, you can open the file manager. And what's really nice as well is a lot of times, because of security, and this is for good reasons, browsers aren't allowed to touch things on a user's computer. And with Electron, you have more access because it is a de desktop application. Uh, you can also use system dialogues, so rather than just uh, making pop-ups, you can use, um, rather than just alerts, sorry, you can also have system dialogues that are built into the OS. Uh, you can put your app in the tray, which is quite nice, I really like it. I built a little, I, I, I didn't build, I edited a little Pomodoro app so that it's in the tray and every time I need it, it pops up and just reminds me to switch between tasks. Um, you can also, uh, where is notifications? Yes. You can also do basic notifications, which when you hit view demo, because I've got my um, thing on do not disturb, do not show. I know this because I was tr I built one live and it didn't work for ages uh, it, in, in a demo. So you've got basic notifications. You can also do notifications with images and sound as well. I'm going to turn that off before my stack messages come back in. Um, so there's so much powerful things that you can do with um, Electron. And what it really does is it gives us JavaScript developers the power <coughs> to step out of just the browser and to build these desktop applications with the resources we know, with the skills we, we have. Okay, back to this. Cool, so um, let's say you're thinking about getting started with Electron. So um, you will eventually start with the index.html, your main.js, and then you'd also have a renderer.js. And you're going to eventually reach this point where you're going to have to decide, should I use a boilerplate? Now, uh, I'm just gonna explain what a boilerplate is for anyone who's new. So boilerplates are, um, I like to describe them as sort of guidelines. They give you some code that gives you all the framework you need to get started and then you can start building on top of it. I saw this YouTuber who buys coloring books, but then because he is a, um, a graphic artist, he then colors them like so much better than the actual coloring books. And that's kind of what a boilerplate is. It gives you this code and this framework to get you started, but then gives you all sort of freedom to build on top of it. Now, when you are building an Electron app, it's not just developing it and rendering things onto the screen that is um, a challenge. Now, because you are working to get this application onto many different um, architectures, onto many different operating systems, each of these have slightly different ways of packaging. And unlike um, some other parts, um, other frameworks, uh, it's not opinionated. So there's not one right way of doing it, and we're still trying to figure out the best way um, best way to package it. But one thing I would encourage you to do is to use a command line interface. And I know we all know, what, uh, many of us may know what a command line interface is, but specifically in the world of Electron, what it does is it helps you to deal with packaging your app ready to be installed on different um, platforms as well. And I like to think of the command line interface as if Santa had to deliver Christmas all by himself, it would be very difficult. And that's why he has his little helpers, and that's what the command line interface, when you're using it with Electron, <coughs> can help you with. Uh, so thank you for listening, and this was just a brief introduction into what you can do with Electron. Uh, I'm going to show you a little thing about the, the thing I spoke about earlier that I've been working on. So this was Twilio Quest, so this is an Electron app. Uh, we built this using, let me just end that conversation. We built this using um, JavaScript and web technology. So technically it can be run in the browser, but because we are running it um, inside <coughs> Electron, let's see if we can find a mission. I've just reset it so I can't open a mission. But because of that, we have a JavaScript editor and a node runtime actually inside the game. Um, and we are able to implement that only really because it's Electron and we have access to all the node APIs. And that's just an example of something that you can build with Electron. 
But thank you very much for listening. My name's Nathaniel Kenwell. You can find me on Twitter. Um, if you have any questions about Electron, I try to keep it quite just like as an introduction because I know we have so many different skill levels. And some of you may have already built stuff with Electron before and maybe uh, probably know a lot more than me. But feel free to come and ask me questions and also to point out maybe if I said anything incorrect <coughs> and you want to chat about it. But thank you very much for listening. Have a good night. <laughs>